Hi, um, so this um, tutorial is going to be about faces. Now, uh, for the movie Sintel, I ended up doing quite a bit of the facial animation on the film, uh, quite a bit of the close ups and, and so on, and uh, I learned quite a bit about that uh, making this film. Uh, I thought it was really difficult, quite a challenge, but, but there are uh, quite a few of uh, tips and tricks that uh, really helped me while I was doing this. And so I thought I might want to share a few of them. Um, so this tutorial is going to be all about facial expressions and uh, ways to use them uh, on, a, on a film or whatever. And I'm going to be using Sintel as an example since, we, since this is all about Sintel. So I've loaded up a scene, I've imported uh, the Sintel rig which is on the DVD and, and uh, also on the web, I believe, and um, and I'm going to be making a little animation with her, uh, moving her face around only. So I've got Sintel in a in a just a basic pose here, but I'm going to be zooming right into the face because we're going to be animating the face. Um, now, first of all, over on the right side here, uh, we have some controls. If I right click anywhere on the any of the controls, you'll notice that uh, we have some layers over here and some properties underneath. I'm just going to hide this here. <clears throat> so uh, this is a quick way to switch uh, between the different layers and I'm going to just concentrate on the face. So I've deselected all the layers except for head and face here. So you can see all the facial controls are here. Um, none of the body ones are here to, to sort of get in the way. And so I've got a bunch of controls here and each of these controls has uh, some additional sliders over here that allow you to tweak parts of the face. So I can just start moving these around uh, to change uh, different areas of the face after I select these these different points. Um, now I'm going to be making a little bit a little uh, animation here where Sintel uh, stops to think about something and then comes to a realization. So this is this is uh, no action at all, it's all internal. And uh, I found this quite daunting actually. It's, it's kind of, in some ways, it's, it can be more difficult to do this type of animation than sort of action oriented animation because um, you have to think about the sort of internal emotions of the character. But we're going to do something fairly simple, just sort of the character thinks about something and then comes to a realization. And, um, and there are a number of tricks you can use here that, that I found handy. So we're, I'm going to start by making just a few basic poses. <clears throat> this is um, this is just Sintel uh, and her default uh, pose, and we'll start with that. So she's just, we're just going to key all this, and to do that, I'm just going to select all the the controls here, and uh, hit I, and then lock rot scale. This keys the location and the rotation and the scale of all these keys. Additionally. I'll need to keyframe all these uh, parameters over here, and I can do that by just uh, hovering over any parameter, as you can with any parameter in Blender, and then hit the I key, it, then it inserts uh, a keyframe here. So uh, I'm just going to go over all of these, hold down the I key, and just hold down the I key, go over, go uh, over all of these, and just it just inserts keyframes. So now I've got everything on frame one keyed in the default pose. And um, so now I'm going to make the next pose where she's thinking. And uh, what I found with this facial animation is that really the the main driver in the face is the is the eyes. I mean, there's a saying that the eyes are the um, are the windows to the soul, and uh, it turns out to be true. So um, uh, I'm just going to move the eyes over here down down to the uh, bottom left, uh, her her right, and. Um, and just move the head with it. Also now she's, she's looking down here, she's, she's thinking about something. I'm just going to slightly move all of these. And I've got auto key on down here, so you can see as soon as I make a change uh, in the uh, in the dope sheet, uh, you'll see they start, appear as, uh, start to appear as keyframes over here. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scrunch up her face a little bit, because as you think, you kind of the, the brain's really working and you sort of have to sort of concentrate. And concentration uh, is usually shown by sort of a scrunching up the face. So I'm just going to bring up the, the mad control here 
and she's not really angry but she's more sort of thinking and then I'm just going to bring in the, the bring down the inner controls more uh, maybe slightly less mad and I'm also going to make her squint because her she her eyes are, are are close together now because she's spending so much brain power just thinking that you know her eyes <clears throat> have less activity so I'm just going to bring down uh, bring down the eyes here and also just bring up the squint control which may, really makes her sort of scrunches up her face also next I'm just going to open her mouth a little bit because as, as we sort of stop to think we kind of forget what her face is doing so the so the the mouth just sort of naturally opens a little bit and uh, this the default way the mouth open looks looks a little bit strange so I'm just going to uh, add a little bit of smile here which just makes it look a bit more natural and a bit of the E shape and I'm also going to add a little bit of sneer here and I think I've opened the mouth too much so and a bit of this shape too, the pucker shape so now I can preview the face without all of these controls by just disabling this, this layer where I put the armature so now I've got a face here and you know it's not perfect but it, it starts to get the job done. I'm just going to concentrate more on the eyes now to make these read and make sure that that they're closer to the bottom here and then sneer her up a little bit more alright okay now so I want to insert this as a keyframe and again I'm going to select all the keys and first I'm going to insert the, the locations and rotations and then I have all of these values over here now the, the uh, yellow ones are the ones that are already keyed and the green ones uh, are values or channels that are, have animation on them but haven't been keyed yet so I'm going to just hold the I key and just slide the cursor over all of these objects and you notice they just get yellow as the keys are inserted here so now we've keyed everything okay um, usually when I set up a scene I mainly just use the summary dope sheet uh, part of the dope sheet here at the top so I don't have to worry about all the keyframes down here I can just move a whole set of keyframes around by just selecting the summary channel um, so uh, most of the time I'm just moving all the keyframes around for a particular pose and I don't need to do this on a, on a you know a primary object so I can just select this um, this summary now I'm going to make the, the third uh, keyframe and this is where our character comes to a realization she looks back up at the camera and is surprised she's, she's realized something so <clears throat> I'm going to do that by putting the camera up again and resetting the neck and now she's she's back up here um, and the other thing you can do is you can play there's a very important control with, in Sintel here which is there's the dilation uh, control and uh, the dilation of the pupil changes uh, with humans based on a number of factors uh, the main one is light, you know, how much light comes into the eye. So you might, you know, change that if you're in a, a very dark environment. Uh, the dilation of the eye sort of expands, just like the aperture of a camera. If you want to take low light photography, you increase the size of the aperture uh, so that more light gets in. <clears throat> and, um, and but, uh, but likewise, when people are scared or afraid uh, or, or realize something uh, dramatic, um, the eyes also uh, dilate out so uh, it's just a natural thing and it actually uh, can make quite a big difference to to how your character looks you just you know before with and without so I'm just going to do a little bit of dilation here it it's good for sort of signifying a transition that there's something going on inside the character's head so I'm just going to increase this <clears throat> now next as we realize something uh, our eyebrows tend to go up because we we have to let everything in, it's like, oh my god, um, the, the face sort of opens up completely. So I'm just going to take these and put them up and put this back up here. 
and remove the sad. And now she looks really tired because her eyelids are still down, so we can have to put those back up uh, as well. And so, and third, her sort of her her jaw drops. Oh my god. Um, So that looks a bit silly. All right, so now I've got her, her up here. Now she's, she's come to a realization uh, here. And I'm just gonna insert all the keys again, select <clears throat> all the controls, hit lock, rot, scale, and then insert all of the, the parameters over here as well as keys. All right. So now I've got these three uh, keyframes. I'm just going to remove the armature here. And now you, you can see them. I can play them back as well. Uh, I've just put an arbitrary amount of time in between each keyframe. So when you play them back, uh, you know, the poses, you see the poses are there, but what's missing to, to be able to read the face, to be able to read the expression of the character, is the timing. Because so much about facial animation and of course animation in general is it's all about the timing and and this is very true for faces as well now in this uh, sort of little animation here in this expression um, we are bringing attention to the fact that the character has has a realization there's a transition and in order to best signify a transition you have to break up uh, the rhythm now this animation is very short so it's not really a rhythm but you have to at least vary the timing a little bit uh, to make the audience realize that there's a difference and uh, and since as well within herself there's a difference now uh, now going on so so by just having equal timing you don't really uh, say anything so let me just uh, show you this I'm just gonna <clears throat> expand the timing of this and so and make this uh, this a moving this uh, middle pose here, a hold. So now I'm just going just gonna to stay on that thinking pose for a while. And the timing is still equal. So now she's thinking here, and then she realizes something. And uh, that's all well and good. But now see what happens when you start to vary the timing. So I'm going to try a few different things. Now one, one thing you can do is you can have her slowly start to think and then realize something very quickly. So let's let's try this. I'm just gonna play this back. So she thinks about something and then she realizes it. So by by varying the timing like this, we can really make the animation work. We can really make it seem like she thinks and then comes to a conclusion of some sort. We can also do it the other way around. It doesn't have to be like that. It can also be she starts thinking, and then, oh, the, the realization dawns on her slowly, and this can e this can actually work even more powerfully, I think. So, she's thinking here, and then, oh, so you know, by breaking it up like that, uh, unevenly, you signify the uh, the transition. So, <clears throat> um, how can we improve this animation further? Uh, of course, this is just a basic block on some very quick faces, but how can we start to bring this uh, to a level where you really start to believe that the character is actually thinking? Uh, well, first of all, I'm just going to make sure that the, the it doesn't look as silly, so I'm just going to make these moving holes, uh, make these holes into moving holes, which means that the face uh, will start to uh, move just a little bit, so it's not completely still. And there's a very quick uh, trick you can use to make a, a hold into a moving hold, which is you can insert a keyframe just before uh, just before the, the key in question. So if I, if I go, let's say here, and insert a key on all channels, and then move this over, um, and now I play back, you can see now it's got a moving hold. It's not completely still anymore. And I can do the same on the other end, I can just uh, expand this and then insert a keyframe just a few frames 
before and then replace that key with the with the new one. So if I'm moving hold here and then the slow one. Now with the eyes being the <coughs> uh, the window to the soul, the eye is also usually the first to react in any given situation. So not always but oftentimes the eyes lead uh, the action. So if a character looks around, usually the eyes go first and then the head. It can seem subtle, but actually makes a big difference in believability. So, uh, whereas on this part you see all the different, uh, the, the, the head and the eyes and everything moves simultaneously, I'm just going to do a quick experiment to make the eyes lead the action. And this is very easy to do. I'm just going to take the eye target and move it over. I'm just going to delay the, the beginning here. Uh, and now I'm going to play back the first bit here. And you see now that the eyes are leading as she looks down here, it's much more believable because you have uh, both because things aren't moving uh, simultaneously, uh, there's a bit of variation there, but, but mostly because the eyes are now leading the action. In order to make this a little bit better, we have to just make sure that the pupils are still inside her face. And uh, so I'm just going to adjust in the middle here. I'm going to adjust the, the eyelids here just to make this a little bit more believable. So it doesn't look as silly. And I'm going to do the same uh, with the look up here. So the eyes. I'm just going to locate the eye target here, here it is, and I'm just going to make that look up, look up here. And again, I'm just going to bring the eyebrows, or the eyelids up here. And actually I'm going to do a little overshoot with the, with the eyebrows. So as she looks up, she comes to the realization where her eyebrows are, and she just comes to this realization, they kind of lead as well and uh, overshoot a little bit. So here I'm just going to put them up even further than they, than they sort of end up being. And this makes them go up and then naturally fall down a little bit more <clears throat> at the end here. One of the things I really like to do with, uh, with eyes is to make sure that the eye target moves uh, linearly because uh, by default when you start to insert keyframes in Blender it, uh, it adds sort of a Bezier interpolation between keyframes. And this can, in many cases, be good, but with the eye, with, with the eyes that, that move sort of very quickly and focus on a specific area, uh, this sort of slow movement around of the eye target um, actually makes it look less believable. Um, so I like to switch these to linear. Now one way to do that is to go to the graph editor and select the eye target and then go to key interpolation mode linear. Alright, so now, oh sorry, you have to select all the keys as well. So, linear, there we go, and then you see the transition is linear here. And now, you can see uh, that they move linearly. And this is a little bit better. But, but the, the main thing that's still a little bit strange is the sort of very even, uh, slow movement of the eyes. And it's almost impossible to do this um, so I'm just going to break this up a little bit just to make it a little bit more natural by just bringing the eyes over and just adding a little bit of uh, sort of breaking it up a little bit and sort of freezing on an area here breaking it up here. I'm also going to do it as she thinks because this is where she's really thinking. The activity is going on here while she's thinking and so by breaking up the position of the eyes uh, this this really helps sort of sell the fact that she's that she is, uh, there's this activity in her brain going on. So I'm just adding a few different poses for this guy here. 
the eye target. And I'm just going to move these over, and so you can see. Sorry, just need to add one more. And then she moves into looking up here. I'm just going to bring these up. So you can see I'm spending all this time just on the eyes. And you can see if I remove all the controls and just concentrate on the Sintel, you see you can see that we've uh, actually quickly created something that uh, that works fairly well. And you can, it, it really shows how far you can get by just using these simple techniques, which is uh, break up the timing in the face, uh, focus on the eyes, focus on the eye brows, uh, and focus on the uh, the line of sight, the uh, the eye lines, and uh, and with these few simple tricks in faces, you can actually get uh, get very far. And the central rig is actually quite a a cool rate to, and quite a flexible one. Um, so I really recommend uh, using this uh, for your facial tests. And there you are.